So we got Vlad TV, man. Uh, Vlad TV is talking to WAC 100. If you know anything about uh, the hip-hop culture, then you understand that WAC 100 is a prominent figure in the hip-hop culture. They are discussing um, the artist that I did a video on yesterday, Little Dirk, and this whole situation. Um, once again, I'm going to listen to the video with you guys. I'm going to touch on it a little bit, but all my real people are going to stick to the end of the video and see what I got to say. So, without further ado, let's get right into this and let's see what they got to say. Let's see how this interview went. Let's get it. This was really a shock. I mean, you've heard about, you know, oh, so-and-so and Dirk is behind this and Dirk is behind that. But ultimately, he's managed to really stay out the way. He just got the key to the city to Chicago they a few days ago. They, they, they took, took it back. back. Yep. Took it back today. They took it back. And uh, disassociated himself. So it was like, it's another hit because that was a way out for a lot of youngsters in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, that door is closed. You know, you got Diddy going through what he's going through. Um, and Dirk just starting his climb. They tell, they're claiming they got wiretaps. Um, I think he said a good point. This is the hip hop culture right now. It's at a disarray. There's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of different pieces. And that's exactly why I'm even talking about this type of stuff because these kids are not getting the same hip hop experience we had. All of the artists are going down by Rico. They're going down by big ass charges that carry a lot of time. You know what I mean? So it's serious things we're talking about. It's not, you know, for everybody. And, you know, I would hope that if you're not into what we're talking about, just go to another video. But the people that are here for what we're talking about, this is important because it's about the culture. You feel me? Write culture in the comments if you agree. His climb. They tell, they're claiming they got wiretaps. Um, I think ultimately they came to Guinea because they was like, we. they seen the change. They seen it like, okay, this dude is going all the way clean, straight. He's probably not. Okay, going he to turned Muslim, that. like hardcore Muslim. You see him with the robes and everything else like that. And I'm sure this probably contributed to it. I'm sure this in the back of his head, because they ultimately killed the wrong person on top of it. I mean, well, I mean, there's no rules. I think I believe you might have. been. I don't know. Was he out pumping the gas? I'm not sure. Or yeah, was he in the, the back details. seat? You know, I don't know I'm where he sure. was at. But with that type of firepower, you know, they really. Um, they attempted to kill whatever was in there. Yeah. The, the scary part about this is that intersection, and you're dealing with guns with switches on them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a huge charge in and of itself. Brother, Yeah. that intersection is very busy. Exactly. Right, shopping. them bullets is flying. Everybody's right? shopping over there. Anybody could have got hit. Easy. That, you, you know, it's everything right there in that intersection, right? So thank God that didn't happen. You know, um, Condolences to the family of the young man that was killed. And then, you know, Quando, man, that's it. In the back of his head, once again, he, he feels like he's responsible. You know, he semi survived it with, with Lil Tim because Lil Tim ultimately beat the case. But he, that was yeah, a stress. That, that was because of Stand Your Ground yeah. Yeah. in Georgia. Was it Stand Your Ground or they couldn't ground. prove? What bullet killed him? Because I believe security fired on him too. Security of the club was fired. I had read it was standard ground. Gotcha. Which so, makes perfect sense. Yeah, but yeah. but even with even at that, it was a period of time that his friend was on, you know, had a murder charge. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I know he's looking at himself like, why me? Everything around me, everything tied to me. Something has to happen. Why is this happening? And I don't think Quando does, I don't know, he, he hasn't been like a ruthless guy to where no. you just want to, you know what I mean? No, man, listen, his friends, you know, were doing what they're doing. We even talked about his current case that he had to plead guilty for, his Fed case. And it was like around drug dealing and so forth. And it was like, okay, it's clear Quando was not drug dealing. He's yeah. He has an album with NBA Youngboy. His streams are crazy. He's got multiple songs with over 100 million streams. Uh, he does shows. He's successful in his own right. You know, they hemmed now, him up with what enough. people around him were doing. that's the weird thing about having conversations with people that don't understand the culture. That's not enough for people like, you know, you're getting a, a 200 to $800 per 100,000 streams. That may not be enough to really, you know, have a real lifestyle. 
I'm not saying that they should take the choices that they're taking, but I'm just saying that you got to understand the culture and why people make certain decisions that they make. I mean, who's to say that he didn't sell drugs? Who's to say that he did? I don't know. I'm just saying that it's about knowledge. And I think that this whole situation is about, you know, helping people understand that there is a different way. These are the results of your actions. That's what everybody's going to learn by the end of this video. Doing on their own time. And, and that's, that's the unfortunate part. And, and the other part that's sort of weird to me is I've been around Dirk. I've interviewed him twice. We, we've hung out a little bit here and there. I don't get that energy being around him that this is a ruthless, you know, gangster, killer type dude. And I've been around, you know, he's not a very tall guy, but I've been around short people before. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was around Jimmy Henchman, you could feel that energy. You know, okay, this guy's not physically big, but you push him a certain type of way and, you know, you could see what's going to happen. Could, Jimmy was pretty good about camouflaging. Now, you just now, knew who Jimmy was. Okay, so maybe yeah. that's the thing. Maybe yeah, maybe Jimmy, his, his reputation spoke. Up, yeah, Yo, Jimmy Whack me acting like nobody gangster than Whack, man. Kind of, it wasn't all dude in the stature. He didn't say too much. He wasn't an aggressive speaking dude. He was a stern speaking dude, right? But he didn't really come off with the with the Suge Knight effect. All right, so maybe his yeah, his reputation that, preceded him. Yeah, yeah, so maybe knew, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll give if you that. You knew I'll his reputation. You, you automatically stepped into the situation. No, you're right. Because remember, I was around him in Game when you know before you know you were rocking yeah. with Game during the first album. I was yeah. part of that rollout. That was my first video project ever. Was the you know uh, the Devil's Advocate with me, Game, and New Jersey Devil. So I, I was in the studio with them. I was at their hotel rooms and everything else like that. So that's when I first met Jimmy. Uh, but you're right. I had heard about Jimmy beforehand and yeah. But then again, you know how the feds work. We don't care how many chickens or turkeys you pass out. Yeah. We don't care how many book bags you didn't pass out. Facts. What we care about is these wiretaps. Mm -hmm. We care about these confidential informants and we care about your actions within the means of of the law, that's all they care about. You can, I mean, let's be real. Every drug kingpin that we know back in the 60s and 70s and 80s all passed out turkeys to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's like a but front. that didn't eliminate the fact that you were passing out uh, kilos and kilos of drugs to the neighborhood. <laughs> that's so, right. So, you right. know, it ain't like, okay, how many turkeys did he pass out versus how many drugs did he sell? Yeah, don't that's not like a that. factor, right? The factor is, did or didn't you break the law? In this situation, I believe he fell victim to the propaganda of the naysayers of when you gonna slide for Vaughn. Yeah, hashtag yeah. slide for Vaughn was in all his mentions, I'm sure. You know, but the same people that are saying slide for Vaughn are now saying... You're stupid You're, for sliding for Vaughn. Exactly. You don't you know what I'm saying? Do. It's, it's, this is how life works. This is how life works. This is why I try to avoid comments as much as I can, because no matter who you listen to, they will clown you either way. That's you can't care about the things that they want you to care about. You have to stay focused on the things that you're supposed to care about. That's a fact. See, that's the reality. Like, that whole, like, okay, so once King Vaughn got, you know, the situation that went down, that was a time for Dirk to kind of calm it down because it's all eyes on you. Everybody already was expecting you to do something. They were expecting you to go out and go crazy. Um, I think that when the thing happened in L.A., I didn't even think of Dirk. That's how you know, like, I didn't think of Dirk because I thought the same thing that everybody else thought. Who would be dumb enough to do something knowing that everybody's looking? But guess what? They did it, and they did it that blatantly, and, you know, they have the wiretaps. Now, the wiretaps changes the game. You know why the wiretaps changes the game? Imagine what you talked about with your friends for two years. You know, could it be all illegal? Could be illegal, legal, whatever. But you talked about it in, in the confidence of talking about it with personal people. You, you, you're vulnerable. You're talking about anything. So the wiretaps just make it crazy. You know, the guy that had the wiretap did 12 years and then he came home and the wiretap was for two years. What gets a little crazy is two years. In two years, his his baby mom got killed, who was a um, UPS worker. She got killed in Chicago. So it's kind of a crazy situation. That would mean that they found out something a year ago, a year into this two years, and then this last year was them knowing that he had the wire on him. 
So I don't know. This is a very messy situation. Um, I don't think in the history of anybody getting the keys to the city has had to give back the keys to the city for this level of, you know, crime. But guys, let me know if you want more info on this. You want more videos on this. You know, we're at 55,000 on the channel. I want to get to 100,000. Make sure you hit the top bell and I'll see you on the next one.